among evaporation, condensation, and precipitation that form the water cycle, it is precipitation that we experience the most. Because, well, we've all enjoyed the rains, haven't we? Paper boats, puddles, and wet clothes. But there is more to the rains than just this. Rains can be tricky, you see. Too little and we have a water shortage. Too much and we have destructive floods. So let's see how rain forms in different regions of the earth. To start with, there are three major types of rainfall. The first one is called convectional rainfall. Convectional? Does it remind you of something? Something called convection? Let's take boiling water for example. In the container, the water in the lower part heats up first. The water there gets lighter and travels up towards the surface. Similarly, water molecules on the Earth's surface continuously heat up and rise above. This is called convection. Once the water molecules reach a certain height in the atmosphere, the cold temperatures there start cooling them down. Because of which, they clump together and form clouds. The clouds then get heavier and heavier and finally pour down the water molecules back to the Earth's surface as rain. This rainfall is quite simply called convectional rainfall. Now this type of rainfall is mostly encountered in places that are pretty close to the equator. Example, countries like Indonesia, Malaysia and Singapore. This type of rainfall is usually very heavy and results in thunderstorms. Now the second type is called orographic rainfall. The word orographic is associated with mountains. Rain bearing clouds travel from far across to deliver rain to different places until they find an obstruction. In this case, mountains or hills. When heavy rain filled clouds move across the land and come across an obstruction like this mountain here, they stop. Now the only way to go over to the other side is to go above the mountain, right? But here is the problem. The clouds are heavy. Now in order to go over to the other side, the clouds need to lose some weight. In order to do that, the clouds need to drop some of their water. Hence, it rains on this side of the mountain. It is called the windward side. Once it's done raining, the clouds move up and go over to the other side. Now, since most of the rain has happened on this side, the other side doesn't receive much rain. This side of the mountain is called the leeward side. And the best example of this type is the one occurring near the Aravali Ranges. Heavy clouds from the Arabian Sea enter the country through the Western Ghats. They bring rain to these areas first before being blocked by the Aravali Ranges. They unload all the water here on the windward side, leaving the other side or the leeward side of the Aravali dry. Thus, we have the dry Thar Desert on the leeward side of the Aravali. Cyclonic rainfall occurs when cold and warm air meet. That is, when a cold air mass meets a warm air mass. But what do we mean by air mass? Mm. Okay, 
Let's say you take a small vessel of water and boil it. After some time, you will observe that the space above the vessel slowly gets warm. You can feel it too. Just like how you can feel if your food or coffee is hot or not. You don't need to touch the food or coffee to find that out, right? So what has happened here is that the heat from the objects is heating up the air around them too. When this air moves, you feel it as heat. Now this same thing happens on the earth. Just like in the case of our boiling water, air around a large part of oceans or land gets heated up or cooled down. This large area of heated or cooled air is called an air mass. So sometimes an air mass stretches for 10 to 20 kilometers, forming an entire block of hot or cold air. This boundary where these air masses meet is called the front. Since the huge warm air mass is lighter than the equally huge cold air mass, it rises and the cold air mass sinks. Once the warm air mass rises, the cold air mass underneath cools it down and the moisture carried by the warm air mass forms clouds. When the clouds get heavy, it results in cyclonic rainfall. So those were three different ways in which water that went up into the atmosphere rains back down. This water cycle in a way ensures that water moves up and down and gets stored in different regions of the earth. Sometimes in the atmosphere. Sometimes rivers. Sometimes underground. And most of the times in the ocean. If you like this video and want to watch many many more amazing videos like these, like and subscribe to our channel now.